In this tutorial, you'll learn the basic features of the Raspberry Pi and how to hook up the Raspberry Pi. You'll learn how to get online with the Raspberry Pi. You'll learn how to mount and unmount a flash drive, how to assemble a circuit and connect it to the Arduino, how to use the Arduino developer's environment on the Raspberry Pi, and finally, how to shut the Raspberry Pi down. On the front end of the Raspberry Pi, there is a slot for the micro SD card that holds the Pi's operating system, downloaded packages, and whatever files users create. Next to the slot that holds the micro SD card are two LEDs. The red light stays on as long as the Pi receives power, and the green light blinks to indicate software activity. On the right side of the Raspberry Pi are three ports, a micro USB port for power, a port for the HDMI cable, which is how you connect the monitor, and a port for audio video. On the back end of the Raspberry Pi are four USB ports. This is where you'll connect the mouse and the keyboard, leaving two spare ports can be used to plug in either a flash drive or some other device. Next to the USB ports is an Ethernet port, which you will not need to use because these Raspberry Pis come with Wi-Fi. Remove the white lid. Notice the row of pins. This is a GPIO header. The GPIO header has 40 general purpose input output pins and this is how external circuits are connected to the Pi. This is also how hats are attached to the Raspberry Pi. The acronym HAT stands for Hardware Attached on Top. If you're a C programming student, you will not need to make use of these pins. Replace the white lid. Finally, notice there is no on or off switch. The Raspberry Pi boots up as soon as it receives power. You always connect the power last. This is the official Raspberry Pi power supply. Your power supply might look a little different. This is the HDMI cable that you'll use to connect the Raspberry Pi to the monitor. First connect the mouse and the keyboard. Next connect the HDMI cable. And finally connect the power supply. If the boot process is successful, you'll see a color square appear on the monitor. Then a scrolling list of operating system processes. Then a black for a few seconds. And finally, the desktop. The SSID for the college's internet is PAW. To go online, simply click on the browser icon on the left side of the menu bar. Always save all the files you create to a flash drive or email them to yourself.
to mount a flash drive, plug it into one of the spare USB ports. A dialog box will appear asking you if you wish to open the drive in the file manager. You can access your flash drive in the media subdirectory. To unmount the flash drive, go to the triangle on the far right side of the menu bar and select the flash drive. You'll see a message indicating that it's safe to remove it. Let's first build the circuit and connect it to the Arduino. In this tutorial, you'll use the Arduino board to control a simple circuit that flashes an LED light. The circuit you will build consists of two components, an LED and a resistor. You might be using a different color LED and or resistor of a different value. The resistor is not polarized, but the LED is. The longer LED leg corresponds to the positive side and the shorter LED leg corresponds to the negative side. In addition, there are two jumper wires that you will use to connect the circuit to the Arduino. The colors of the jumper wires do not matter. This is a solderless circuit board. There are two sets of rows of five holes each on each side. On the left and right sides, there are columns labeled plus and minus one. We won't be using these. Each hole is designated by a letter A to E or F to J and a number one to 30. Plugging a component into one of the five holes in a row will put it into electrical contact with any of the other components plugged into the same row. How to plug components into the solderless circuit board. Plug the long leg of the LED into A28. Plug the short leg of the LED into A25. Plug one leg of the resistor into B25. Plug the other leg of the resistor into B21. Plug one end of a jumper wire into E28 and the other end of the hole labeled 10 on the Arduino board. Plug the other jumper wire into E21 and the other end into the hole labeled ground GND or ground on the Arduino board. You will use this cable to connect the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino. Plug this cable into one of the free USB ports on the Raspberry Pi and then plug it in to the USB port on the Arduino. This is how your circuit should look when it's connected to the Arduino, which in turn is connected to the Raspberry Pi. To begin programming the Arduino, go to the Raspberry, select the programming menu, and then the Arduino option. This is the code that you'll upload to the Arduino. Code that's uploaded to Arduinos are called sketches. This consists of two simple functions, a setup function and a loop function. Notice the LED pin is 10. That's what you connected the jumper wire to on your circuit. The interval is set to 2000. This indicates that the interval between flashing on and off will be 2000 milliseconds.
Now upload the sketch. If your code did not execute properly, an error message will be displayed at the bottom. This code executed successfully. If all electrical contacts are good, you'll see the LED flashing on and off. As a courtesy to the next user, clear out the project you just uploaded. Simply type in these two empty functions and upload this sketch to the Arduino. To shut the Raspberry Pi down, go to the Raspberry Pi icon and select Shutdown. 